In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, we are going to continue our study in the book of Daniel. And just to give you a little bit of context here, King Darius has made his decree that anybody that presents any petition to any god other than him, anybody other than King Darius, is to be thrown into the lion's den, and his pride sort of drove him into signing this without really thinking it through. Because this is a person that really likes Daniel, he intends to make him the number two in the entire kingdom, but his pride does not, it sort of blinds him and makes him sign this thing without thinking. I say makes him, he chooses to, but you know what I'm saying, that his, his pride is sort of the motivating factor behind that. So King Darius has signed this petition, and this is how Daniel reacts to it. Well, if I can go ahead and get the verse pulled up. This is in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered his house. Now in his roof chamber, he had windows open toward Jerusalem, and he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before God, as he had been doing previously. You want to talk about a very serious faith? You want to talk about the kind of faith that leaders in God's army are supposed to have? That's it. Daniel. He doesn't make a spectacle of himself. He doesn't show up at the palace and make some kind of big scene and pray as he wouldn't have normally done. He basically just takes the stance of, yeah, the world or the government can pass whatever law they want. I'm not changing. I'm going to do exactly what I did beforehand. Because I am a subject to the Most High God. And his laws trumps man's laws. I'm going to follow him first. And any consequences that I incur with that, well, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So he doesn't go to one extreme. He doesn't make a show out of himself. He doesn't try to get arrested or make some kind of big display of defiance. He just continues on his prayer routine as he has always done. And the reason I admire Daniel's faith so much, I think is because I understand my own weakness as a human being. Because I don't want to go through persecution. I've had it happen before. But if I were in Daniel's situation and I know how my mind works, I tend to believe that a lot of us, myself included, would have justified some kind of way to not continue on our regular routine. Now, it says in there that Daniel in his chambers, he has windows and he keeps those windows open and he keeps them pointed toward Jerusalem and he prays in that chamber, presumably kind of a place for him to be by himself and just to have a time and communion between him and his father. And the way he has always done it is that he happens to have those windows open. Don't you think that he could have justified in his own mind, you know, I don't think God's really going to know the difference if I close the windows. I don't think that my prayers aren't going to be heard by the Almighty God just because my window happens to be closed. And it could really cause a lot of problems for me if I don't conceal the fact that I'm praying. And God's going to hear my prayers anyway. That would have been very easy for Daniel to do. And I don't think that it would have been necessarily something that were sinful for him to do, to try to preserve his life. He would have tried to justify it that way. And yet we see Daniel saying, no, I am not going to change my routine because of what the world tells me I can and can't do. I have a faith. I believe in the Almighty God and that if I continue to obey him, he's going to figure out some way to protect me. 
That's somebody that does not mind walking through fire. That is somebody that his faith and trust in God is so complete that there is nothing that will deter him from serving him in the way that he has always done. That's somebody with exemplary faith. Somebody that will inspire others and has for millennia. One of the reasons Daniel is one of my favorite Bible characters is specifically because of this verse. Because when faced with a challenge, that it wouldn't have necessarily been sinful or very difficult for him to forego his normal prayer routine, he doesn't even do that. He says, I'm going to pray to my God and I'm going to serve him the way that I have always done. And whatever consequences I face, that's the consequences I face. That's what courage looks like. That's what a real faith looks like. And it's the kind of faith that I try to emulate in my life, and I think that we could all be better people if we aspired to try to have the kind of faith that God is going to take care of us and the kind of dedication that Daniel has as God's servant. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.